All right, thanks, Nicole. Cleanup uh, efforts continue in full force today across the state this morning. During the height of the storm, many roads needed to be shut down due to downed power lines and trees, many of which have been reopened since then. Joining us in studio this morning with an update, Michael Lewis from the Department of Transportation. Good morning. Thanks for coming in this morning. Glad to be here, Patrick. Uh, what's worse, a snowstorm or this? I was trying to think about that on my way in this well, morning. Uh, the good thing about this is that we're not actually responsible for cleaning the roads for the most part. Right. Um, but this is so widespread. The damage across the state is so widespread. Um, we, we were working through the day yesterday. Our crews were out trying to take care of the trees that were down. That was the big problem yesterday, the wind damage right. on the trees. We were able to take care of most of the areas that were not affected by the power lines. But now we have to work with the national grid to make sure they de-energize the power before our crews can get in there and get the trees out of the way. So people are still experiencing um, a number of locations where, where uh, roads are closed because of trees still that are tied up at the power lines. Mayor Avdijan was just talking about uh, people just getting the debris to, their, to the curb and not worrying about cutting it up and, and chipping it and all that. What would you say to people that have you know, a tree down across, they live on a main road, uh, to let someone else handle that or, or should they try and help out? Well, first and foremost, if there's any connection with a power line, don't do anything with the tree. Right. Make sure that you contact your power company and they'll come and make sure that the, that the power is, is turned off. Um, before that can be taken care of, and you know, uh, the, some of these are these are big, heavy trees. Um, you know, use your own personal uh, you know uh, assessment of whether that's a safe thing to do or not. Um, you know, this is the time after a cleanup of an event like this when many people get into more trouble than they did during right. the storm, is because they're trying to do things they're not familiar with. So, um, you know, if you're if you're unsure, call your local EMA. They'll give you some indication of where to where to go for help to get the trees cleaned up. We're asking everybody, we've been saying it all morning, please be patient. It's so hard to do when you don't have power and you right. can't eat the food in your fridge and all right. that. But, I mean, you don't have a crystal ball, but how long do you think it'll take before things get back to normal? Well, I think it's going to be a while. It, it will be. I think we, one thing we all have to be aware of is this was an enormously widespread storm. This is not just a Rhode Island impact. You had 4.5 million people on the eastern seaboard that are out of power. That's a huge effort right. for the National Grid and the other power companies to get on. Just here in Rhode Island, I think the National Grid had something like 2,500 locations where the power lines were down. So those are 25 individual locations they have to go to. They have a third of their transformers are down. So this is a big effort to get back up and running. So I think we do have to be patient. One thing I do know, this will all get taken care of. With time, this will all get taken care of, and we'll look back on it um, sort of with, uh, if not fondness, at least it'll be in, right. the, in the distant rearview mirror. And finally, any advice for folks that, that are able to watch us at home, you know, as they go out and about and do their thing today, just try and stay out of the way of the folks that are trying to clean this mess up. That's the most important thing. The, the more room that we can give those folks to clean it up, the better, the sooner we'll have back to power the, on a safety um, aspect. We at the highway department and the local communities are affected just like local residents with regard to power. So there are almost 400 traffic signals, state-owned traffic signals that are currently not operating because of no power. Right. Many more on the local roads. So people need to be very careful when they're out there driving. When they get to a traffic signal that, is, that has no power, treat it like a four-way intersection, a four-way stop sign. Stop at every uh, entrance to the intersection. Um, make eye contact with the other people in the yes. intersection and you have patience. I mean, right. you know, be courteous. We're all going to get through this safely. But um, I was a little disappointed as on my commute down to see the number of aggressive drivers. And it's just like, slow down, people. Just calm down and we're all going to get through this. Yeah, road rage is not going to help out the situation here. Thanks right. so much for coming in this morning. My pleasure, Pat. I know you got a long week ahead of you and uh, we'll have the latest uh, on our website all week long as the uh, recovery continues here in Rhode Island on foxprovidence.com.